Welcome everyone to the Hatch Founders Circle. My name's Mitch Weiner. I'm one of the co-founders of DigitalOcean. DigitalOcean is the cloud for developers based right here in New York City. And Hatch is a program that we created to support entrepreneurs and startups around the globe, um, to support them as they scale. And so um, I have two Hatch founders here with me today. And um, why don't you guys just quickly introduce yourself and, and your company. Yeah, so uh, my name is Clem. Um, I'm the founder of Hugging Face, like the emoji, like you can see on my, on my T-shirt. And we're doing a fun artificial intelligence. So you can think of it as like a Tamagotchi that you can chat with. Um, we're just 10 months old, uh, and we just raised uh, our seed round from Betaworks and SV Angel. Hey guys, I'm Kamesh Rumigan. I'm the co-founder of Axern. So pretty much uh, we're an AI fintech company. We track about 300 million websites, including all your social media feeds. And we try to find uh, breaking news for hedge funds and investment banks. Um, and we just closed our seed round uh, last night. Um, so it's pretty good. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. It's really hard to raise capital, obviously. Um, it's not easy. So the first question I have for you guys is, you know, as, an, as an entrepreneur, as a CEO, you know, what, are, what are the sacrifices that you've made uh, as you built your, your startup from the ground up? Um, yeah, there, there've been a lot, especially at the at the beginning. Uh, I think I have the usual story of sharing a room with my co-founder for two months, actually in in Mountain View at the beginning, uh, which which was really 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 harsh, uh, and, and many 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 others uh, along the way. Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, one of the uh, sacrifice would be sacrificing your emotions. So, as a startup uh, co-founder, you have to think logically and try not to let emotions get into the way of uh, your thinking. So like, uh, that was one of the sacrifices I would say I made. Yeah, I remember when I was uh, at Techstars, I slept on the couch for three months during the accelerator program and our CEO slept in, uh, in a bunk bed on the top bunk with our, C with our CTO on the bottom bunk. So, you know, the things you have to do to really grind it out and, and uh, survive early on to bootstrap. Maybe let's talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, Obviously, before you raise money, can you, can you talk a little bit about your, you know, the bootstrapping process? What tips do you have for other startup founders to bootstrap their companies? Yeah, I think um, the way Hugging Face started was really as an experiment at the beginning. And that, that's especially where uh, DigitalOcean was really useful for us to be able like, to uh, launch a new product really, really fast. So we basically launched a first prototype of Hugging Face uh, as a side project, um, like in the day, uh, and just started to see like what users were doing with it. Uh, and that's, that's basically when we realized that people were enjoying it, were interacting with it a lot, uh, and, and that there was something. Yeah, I mean, like in terms of bootstrapping, uh, we used our basement as office space when we started. So me and my co-founder would go there, um, work like throughout the entire night. And then um, in terms of like hiring as well, so instead of paying like really high salary upfront because we can't afford really good employees, we give them stock options um, and equity. So we brought them on board by incentivizing them about the vision of the company and how much the company can grow in the future as well. So uh, talk to me about how you found your other co-founders on your team, you know, and maybe describe the, um, you know, the makeup of their characteristics. Yeah, uh, I think it's funny because like I met my co-founder where basically we were competitors. Uh, he was starting a company really close to what I was doing. Uh, and instead of like being like, oh, let's not talk to each other, it's too scary, maybe it's, it's going to steal my ideas. Uh, we rather like started, started to talk and, and see that we had a lot of common, in common, that we were sharing a lot of things. Um, and we basically kept in touch for five years. And, uh, and five years after, we decided that we wanted to start our uh, next company together. So that, that's how we started. That's awesome. So yeah, so I met my co-founder um, at an NYU event. Uh, so it was pretty much like a startup event because uh, I was looking for a tech co-founder because uh, I pretty much outsourced all the work previously and I was getting nowhere. So I was like, okay, I need a technical co-founder now. And so I went to uh, NYU, went to a startup event, and then uh, found my co-founder there. Then I realized he lived five blocks away from my house. <laughs> and so we, we, uh, we pretty much uh, met, we chat, discussed, 
and uh, we were like, okay, you get, you're pretty cool, so you know. Uh, and <laughs> and plus, uh, he he at the United Nations, he was doing something similar to what I wanted to do, um, and uh, we were like, let's collaborate ideas and start something together. So that's how I met my co-founder. <laughs> that's awesome, guys. I met my co-founders on Craigslist, by the way. Can um, you tell us more? Tell us the story. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did you put the posting up? <laughs> You know, it was, there was a job post up for a uh, head of marketing at a hosting company based in New York. So I was like, what host co hosting company is based in New York? And it was these uh, two Russian brothers, <laughs> Moisey and Ben. And so, you know, they, they were um, building, they were prototyping DigitalOcean at the time. So that's, that's what really drew me in. But anyway, that's enough awesome. about me. Let's get back to you guys. Uh, awesome. so, so what's one mistake that you guys have, have made that you'll never, never do again? Tough question, I know. Yeah, I, th I think probably like the, the one mistake that I've been doing a lot in the previous years was really like to delaying with experiments and, and delaying with launch. Uh, and it resonates a lot with the way we actually started Hugging Face with, with an experiment. Uh, because I, I think especially as like founders, uh, you can think a lot about ideas, you can like um, stay in theory and, and not really experiment uh, and, and you're going like the wrong direction most of the time so now what we're doing uh, is that each time we have a new idea we really experiment it as fast as we can and maybe one, one advice I would have to, to people here if you're getting an idea now or in the next year just just leave TechCrunch Disrupt don't go to the next conference and just build it this afternoon to have users uh, by the end of today uh, I think that's that's something really useful for um, moving forward and, and really making progress really fast. Cool. So I mean, like in terms of um, one of the mistakes would be hiring. So hiring is one of the most difficult and challenging part of like any startup. Um, and one of the mistakes is hiring a lot of sales guys. So <laughs> so in, in my uh, in in my field, like pretty much. I had to, so I thought that I had to hire a lot of sales guys, and then during the interview process, they're really good at selling themselves. But then when you when you bring them on, they're not that good at selling the product. So I had to figure out a way and how I can figure out if these guys are good enough to sell the product before I even actually bring them all. But because like in the interview process, they're extremely good at selling themselves. Um, so that was one of the mistakes I made in the past. Come on, do you have any salespeople on your team? <laughs> no, no, no. Fortunately not. <laughs> Fortunately not. <laughs> Nothing against salespeople, obviously. Yeah. I think um, you know, obviously, you go through different stages of growth as you scale, and uh, you know, the question is, is like timing. You know, when do you bring on a sales leader? When do you bring on a marketing leader? So let's talk a little bit about hiring, since you brought that up, Kamish. Like, what what attributes? Like, what are the key attributes that you look for in a strong hire? Yeah, I think, I think for us, because we're still a, a very, very small team and really like horizontal team, I think it has to do with, with the stage we are at. Uh, we're really looking for people who are able to really lay, lead on this subject and, and really be able to take on a project and kind of like run it from, from uh, the beginning to the end, uh, obviously with the help of everyone in the team, but uh, really being able to take initiative and, and lead their own subjects for the whole company to grow with them, basically. Yeah, execution so important early on. You want people that are going to be able to grind it out, hustle, work hard, you know, work many hours, obviously. So exactly. I think execution is key. Yeah, I mean, like in, in terms of um, my perspective, it would be ha having someone that looks at a task and try to m figure out what's the most efficient way to complete that task. So it doesn't matter of how hard of a worker you are, as long as you're thinking about it smartly and you're able to execute on a task much more efficiently than anyone else, uh, that's one of the main attributes I look for in someone. And so um, both you guys have raised uh, roughly amount, uh, around a million dollars each, so congrats on that. I know that's not an easy uh, accomplishment. So maybe talk a little bit about the fundraising experience. What tips do you have for other co-founders on raising funds? Yeah, I, I always joke with the fact that for me, raising is dating. Like it, it's really like a, a lot of people are going to tell you like it's really rational. It's all about your figures. And yes, it is in, in a way. But uh, more than anything, it's, it's about the people you're meeting and, and kind of like finding the people who you're going to trust and who are going to trust you. Uh, and kind of like build this relationship and, and at some point kind of like uh, make the relationship official by, by getting money from, from them and starting actually working from them. 
Um, so, so my advice would really be to focus more on, on, on uh, the human side of fundraising uh, rather than more like only on rational and, and kind of like uh, the figures, figure aspect of fundraising. Yeah, 100% agree with that uh, statement. So it's, it's more about relationship building than actually just spamming a bunch of VCs with uh, pitch decks. Um, so I feel like that way by building relationships with the VCs and the investors, getting to know them, pitching your vision with them, uh, letting them know that, okay, by coming on board, we can use their expertise and your capital to take us to the next level and try to convince them on a really good plan to take that to the next level. Yeah. So, yeah. I think I didn't raise with uh, people that I, I didn't know for at least six months. Uh, and, and I raised with, with some people also that I knew for a very, very long time. Um, so that's something that I, I would really recommend to kind of like start building relationship early and kind of like yeah. both, both to find the right investor and for having him trust you, but also for you to trust the investor and, and make sure it's someone who's not just right here, just for your round, just for, um, for this one shot, but really for, for the long run. Yeah, I, and, I, and I see that a lot, you know, CEOs especially, they fall into the trap of raising the biggest round possible, um, raising at the highest valuation on the table, and, um, and sometimes they forget about, you know, partnering with, you know, the right investor and building that relationship early on, because it is a long-term relationship, you know, you have to, you're on a, you're on a journey with these investors, you know, you're going to see them, you know, every three months, you know, for your board, you know, board for updates. Exactly. So, you know, building that relationship is so important. Um, what's what's one thing that has surprised you the most on your journey? Um, well, maybe maybe it's in relation to that in terms of like timing. Uh, sometimes, as a founder, especially at like an early stage, you're like, I'm like the master of the time. I can go like as fast as I want. I can like push and and kind of like go way faster than anybody else. But at the end of the day, you still realize that there is a value in patience and in kind of like uh, being at the right time for the right thing on basically every aspect from, from technology fit to kind of like uh, people to get the trust from people. Uh, really like uh, I was really surprised because sometimes you build yourself as an entrepreneur as, as being really impatient and wanting to, to, to get everything now. Uh, but there's a really, really big value in like being patient and kind of like uh, making sure your timing is is right in success. I think. Yeah, for, I mean, for me, it was like um, pretty much how long it actually took us to get here. So I, I mean, we started like 2014. Uh, we just raised our seed round, but when we started 2014, I thought that okay, in the next three months, I'm gonna raise a million dollars with just the idea. <laughs> But then you have to figure out that you actually have to get traction, real revenues, before you can actually raise a good seed round. And so it took us about two, three years, uh, but yeah, it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> so uh, quick question, how did you guys pick your company name? Uh, yeah, so my company name is Hugging Face, like, like the emoji. And uh, it really started as, uh, as a joke. We, uh, are a big fan of emojis. Obviously, we're sending like millions of emojis every day, uh, and we're like, what, what if we could be like the first company to go public, not with the three letters of like the the classic denomination for companies going public, but with an emoji? So we really wanted to have like a, a company name related to an emoji, and uh, the hugging face emoji is is a really interesting one because like it's still an emoji, it's not human, but at the same time, it's trying to do the most human behavior. Uh, ever, which is a hug, right? You, you, you never expect an artificial intelligence or a robot or any sort of technology to hug you, right? That's, that's really human. And so because we want to build an artificial intelligence that is fun and emotional and understands you, uh, we, we felt like it was uh, the perfect name for us. That's, that's very cool. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so f for my company name, pretty much uh, Axern, it has an acronym for Accelerate and accurate information, but the way we chose the name was because it was a six-letter domain that wasn't taken, it was pronounceable, and plus it started with the letter A. So we're listed on every single page, like the first page, if we were to be listed anywhere else. So that was th three of the main reasons why we chose Axer. 
Yeah, picking a name is, is not easy. And um, you know, mo most founders don't don't uh, invest in the brand early on. You know, and, and it, it does prove to provide long term um, value for the for the business. So I think it's really important that you you know understand your mission, your values, how the brand you know connects with with your customers, with your clients. So. Um, it's, it's impressive to hear how much thought has been put behind the name and not just picking a name because it sounds good. <laughs> what about right, digital exactly. ocean? Where, where it's coming from? Uh, that's a good question. So, uh, uh, clouds are formed from the ocean and uh, digital ocean cloud servers are called droplets and clouds are formed from droplets. So there's like a whole kind of scientific backstory with digital ocean. Nice. So that's how we, we came up with the name. And um, I believe Ben, our, our CEO, purchased the domain name, you know, a few years before we even started the company. So he had it in his back pocket. <laughs> so what is uh, one technical decision that you've made that has impacted your company? And uh, so maybe you could explain a little bit more about, you know, why that technical decision was made and how it impacted your company. Um, so so I'm, I'm the CEO of the company, so my co-founder and, and CTO is, is doing most of the uh, technical decisions. So I, I think I, I would go back to uh, kind of like picking my co-founder and CTO was for me like the, the most impactful technical decision. And, um, and I, I picked him not, not only because uh, we were great friends and I wanted really to work with him, but also for, for my vision of artificial intelligence, because like when, when you're going for a subject that is so technical, uh, you can choose to, uh, as a co-founder, someone who's really like a PhD who's doing, who's doing research, uh, but that's uh, really something I, I didn't want because uh, I really wanted to put artificial intelligence uh, in a product that is used by, by millions of people. And so even if my co-founder has like a, um, an AI background. He was building neural networks 15, 15 years ago at, at Stanford. Uh, after that, he's been like building a, a lot of products. And so finding a, a co-founder who's good at, in AI, but also good at building products was a way for me to kind of like uh, achieve this vision of making AI more mainstream. Yeah. yeah, I mean like our tech team, they love building stuff. So they would build the product and the product would get so complicated. But one of the technical decision was we wouldn't build something unless it's very necessary for a customer. Unless the customer say that, okay, we'll be willing to pay for this, then we would execute on building it. But before, we used to keep building and building and building and keep being like super complicated, and then nobody wants to buy it. And so now we're just hitting a, putting a pause on it and making sure that customers would be willing to pay for it before yeah. we actually execute on it. It's, it's really, really hard to build like a user-driven technology to really like uh, uh, make your technical roadmap uh, really focused on uh, what your users or your customers are telling you and really needing. So speaking of roadmap, you know, what's your, what's your three-year roadmap? What's your three-year vision for the company? If it's not three years, you know, what's your, what's your near-term vision for the company? Yeah, so, so our vision is that in, in five years, uh, everybody will have what we call an artificial intelligent friend, which is basically an artificial intelligence that you're chatting with every day, that you created a connection with and, and that, that you like. Uh, and so that's, that's basically what we're uh, trying to build. So I hope that in five years I can come back here and people in the audience would like be chatting with their artificial intelligence about, about the, the talk. That, that's my goal. Yeah, I mean, like in three years, I want every single bank's investment management firms, hedge funds to have a centralized news platform that it can monitor the news with. And it's as simple as that. Right now, everyone, like all the banks, they're subscribed to like 20 different news platforms that's out there. And they have 20 different screens that they're looking at. So my goal or vision for the next three years is to have them look at just one platform, which is our platform. And it's automatically going to understand what type of news they're interested in. And it's going to start spitting out alerts to them. All right, so final question and then let's wrap it up. Um, what's one ask you have for the founder community? One Any ask. ask. So it could be, you know, if you have a hiring challenge, you know, what's, what's something, what's a challenge you're facing? Maybe the community could help. What's one question that you have for the community? Yes, I'm, I'm looking for a really, really uh, weird uh, hiring uh, profile right now. I'm, I'm looking for somebody who's going to be able to design an artificial intelligence for uh, teenagers. 
Uh, and so it's something like in between being able to write, uh, be, being able to understand words, and uh, being able to understand uh, user interface and user interaction, because our user interface is basically words. Um, so, so if you hear of anybody who could fit this kind of like weird position, just let me know. Yeah, I mean, so we're looking to hire for a few positions. So one is a VP of Enterprise Sales, um, VP of Marketing, and a, um, a Business Requirement Analyst. Uh, so that's pretty much the three positions that we are looking for right now. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thanks so much.